we're going to look at here is creating an on method boundary aspect. We have a simple command line application here that calls off to the customer services save method and in there we write to the console the fact that a customer is being saved. Let's go ahead and run this and we'll see that we start the application, the customer services save method writes out customers being saved and the application exits. What we want to do is log around the save method so we can tell when it's being called, when it's being exited, and when it is successfully run. So for this, we're going to create a aspect that writes to the console and uses on method boundary. So let's jump over to our aspect here. And it's just a standard .NET class that's made serializable and we'll say on it inherits from on method boundary aspect. We'll add the using for that. And the first thing we'll do is override the on entry. So on entry is passing in the method execution args where we can get our metadata and values about the parameters going into the target code and the return value and that type of thing. And what we've said for our logging is that when the save method gets called, we want to know that it's being called. So we're going to write to the console that fact. So we'll write out to the console that on entry is being uh, called and we're going to pass into the console write line the class name that is being used so in this case customer services and the method name service we're also going to do this for on success it's the exact same parameter that's being passed into on success and we'll do the exact same write line but we'll change one thing. We're going to say in on success, what was the return value? And we'll add that to our list here. And we'll say args.return value to string. The third one that we're going to add was the fact that we wanted to log that exit was happening. So let's go ahead and override on exit. And we'll just do the same right line here. In on exit we could also make use of the return value but in this case we're not going to. One thing to note is that the return value on save in customer services is actually void. So there's going to be nothing to show but if it was an integer or a class or a list of classes we would see something get returned back as part of the right line. So we've got these done and the next step we have to do is make it so that this aspect is attached to customer services. So let's go back to customer services and on the save method we're going to attribute it with the console right line aspect. We'll add the using and that's all we need to do. So now we've got our aspect attached to this method. Let's go ahead and run this now. And you'll see that our application starts and then we start logging our aspect code. We'll see customer services dot save on entry. Then the code that's executed in the target. Then we see that the on success as part of the aspect has been run and the returns is blank because it's a void. We also see the on exit get run after the on success and then our application exits. So this is all we need to do to write an on method boundary aspect. There are three that we've shown here on entry, on success, and on exit for point cuts. There's also an on exception that works in the same way. And if the target code throws an exception, that point cut gets executed. Let's take a look at what has happened to our code behind the scenes using IL Spy. So if we open IL Spy and open our assembly in it, and we'll take a look at the service class for customer services and the save method specifically. So you can see here that there's a bunch more stuff inside the decompilation of the save method than there was in our original code. Our original code was simply a method declaration of void save in a parameter type customer and then this single line of console right line customers being saved. You can see the IL weaving has added in three or four different things. The first thing it's added is a bunch of collection of values for the method execution args. So it's collecting up all these values so that they can be passed into the different aspect point cuts. The first point cut that gets called is this 
on entry point cut, which we would expect. It should be the first thing that gets called in the execution flow. And then we've added a try finally block. So this is being added so that we always have a finally for the on exit point cut to exist in. You can see here that inside of our try block, we have our original target code that's being called. And then if that successfully runs, we run the on success. If this target code were to throw an exception, it would bubble out of this and the finally would be run, but the on success wouldn't. So this is how the on method boundary structure is going to look inside your code. If we were to have implemented the on exception point cut, we would see a catch of exception here. And then we would also see the on exception point cut being called inside of that.